Hello everyone, welcome to Out of Spec Guide, I'm Max, and today I'm gonna to show you how to start, drive, and charge one of the most exciting vehicles of our time, not just electric, but overall, a super versatile truck that can take you on all kinds of adventures, the Rivian R1T. So, it begins with this key fob. If someone's handed you this thing, it's not a carabiner, that's how you unlock, lock, and control the truck. You can also use your phone as a key with the Rivian app if you download and set that up. But today, we'll just be going over the key fob, which is the most reliable method to bring with you for getting to know the truck. And then we'll kind of talk about how to configure it, climate control, features you should know about, all kinds of things. So, this video is going to have chapters. Feel free to skip around to any of those if you're looking for a specific thing. For example, you just want to know how the adaptive cruise control and driver assist works, or you just want to know how to charge the truck. We're going to have chapters in this video, so you can skip around to those chapters uh, in your YouTube app if you're curious about any aspect and you don't want to watch the whole video. But we're going to cover as much as we can today, so stay tuned. Whether you have the key fob with you or a paired phone with Bluetooth, the truck has a proximity system for locking and unlocking. You'll know it's unlocked when the door handles present themselves to you like this and the mirrors are folded out. When you walk away from the vehicle, it should lock automatically. However, proximity lock and unlock in any vehicle is never 100% reliable. If you wanna be 100% sure, you can of course manually lock and unlock the vehicle from the key fob. You can press basically lock right here, the lower left option. You'll know the vehicle is locked because everything closes in, door handles close, mirrors fold in, it's locked. It also makes a cute chirping noise. I can then press unlock and uh, comes to life, makes another chirping noise and opens up for me. Um, you'll need the vehicle unlocked to be able to open the gear guard and other things we'll show you later. Uh, but now we know the vehicle currently is in an unlocked setting. This truck has some modifications made to it, so yours might not look like this, but one of the cool things about this being a flexible adventure pickup truck is people mount all kinds of things to the Rivian. There are mounting points here um, that are taken up, but basically these could be used for anything, either official Rivian accessories or third-party accessories like this awesome R Overland Rough um, rack. So all kinds of really flexible things you can do with your Rivian, both for storage inside the vehicle and outside of it. What a capable, you know, camping slash adventure just platform really cool but let's get more into the interior of the vehicle and customizing everything for how we want to set it let's start with seat controls very standard power seats here driver and passenger you have lumbar support as well that can be configured you know tilt forward back down up etc i find these are very comfortable very durable seats then when we get in the truck in its interior, in case you want to know how to use the hazard lights, button is right here up the top. And then we have our layout here, starting with a driver instrument display and a main display. So you can see the driver display is fairly simple, shows an image of our truck as well as something we can configure on the left. And then on the right, it's going to show whether you're a park, reverse, neutral, or drive. Importantly, you want to know how much range you have. You can see it here. It's either going to show you the percentage of battery you have, miles of range as estimates you have, or both. Now, I don't like to rely on estimated miles of range because this can vary so much based off your conditions. So I like to know my percentage of battery and go off that. But we can see with 54% battery, it's estimating 164 miles of range. Big things that impact range, we can go here into settings. So on the driver display, right, we press the three dots. That's gonna show us way more options here along with these ones we already have. I'll go into settings and then I can go into vehicle. I can go into units, scroll down. I highly recommend getting to configure this to what you want. I like to have both. If it just shows miles, that's what you'll see. Many of the trucks default to that, but I like to have both displayed. Very important option I just wanted to bring up front. Other big things to know right off the bat is controlling the vehicle. So you can see that if we press this, it's gonna show us everything with the vehicle, right? With this icon, the access and security app along this driver display. We can open the hood, the charge port, the gear tunnel, the tunnel cover, tailgate, and adjust our mirrors and um, steering wheel. Since we're in here, let's first adjust the steering wheel and mirrors, and then I'll show you all of these things. To adjust your mirrors, it's fairly simple. This is one is just a manual one. To adjust your side mirrors, it's a little more complicated. You're gonna hit adjust wheel and mirrors. Then you're gonna choose what you wanna adjust. So if I wanna adjust my side mirrors, here I am. You can see left and right, I'm controlling my mirrors. So with the left end of the steering wheel, I can roll this up and down and you can see it's gonna roll the mirror up and down. To move the mirror left and right, I press on these buttons to the left and the right of the knob 
part in my music. I'm going to pause that. Um, but yeah, you can see that's what it does. If you ever get canceled out of here, press side mirrors again, you're in this adjustment mode. So adjust that. Same process for the right mirror, just on the right side of the steering wheel. Press up, press down, go left, go right to your preference. Then you can optionally remember this to your driver profile if you're the main driver of the vehicle or restore to the default setting. I'm not going to remember this because this is Kyle's truck and um, he has it already set how he likes it. You can see the profile view there. At any time, if you want to get to the profile for the driver of the truck, you can press this option in the upper part of the screen. I'm going to leave that alone for now. We can also adjust the steering wheel. So in that same adjust menu, I'm going to hit steering wheel, and then you're going to be able to basically change the wheel reach with this wheel. So you can see as I push it up, it's pushing the wheel in, scroll it down, it makes the wheel go um, out. Then for the height of the wheel, I just adjust it also, power controls up or down. So these wheels are very important. That's how you adjust your wheel and your mirrors. Um, with these dials basically. So get to know those when you're in that adjustment mode. Uh, you can optionally fold the mirrors. That automatically happens when the car is locked, but you can choose to do that manually at any time. Now let's get to know some of the exterior parts of this truck. If I open the hood, you can see what's gonna happen. Let me get out of the truck and you can see, whoa, our power hood just opened. And unlike a lot of trucks, because this one's electric, it has a front trunk. You can see there's a lot of space in here. Uh, that we can use. It's a nice kind of secure space to stow things away. There's even some cargo netting in here. This is super useful. Now, this is a power operated door, so I really don't recommend that you uh, control this manually. You could force it closed. Don't do that. Use either the driver display or your key fob or the phone app. The simplest method is the key fob, so I'm going to show you that right now. So on the key fob, I'm going to basically... Mm -hmm. On the key fob, I'm going to basically press this button, the top left one that labels the hood, twice. And when I press it twice, it's going to power close that front trunk. Great. Same thing works basically for the rear tailgate, which is manual, but I can release it by pressing twice on the key fob or in that driver display as I showed earlier. Now the trunk pops open and it just automatically has this nice flat loading bed functionality. Uh, that's the bed of the truck. Then we have an electronic tono cover. This has been controversial because this uh, is not the most reliable thing. In this truck, it's still working, but you can see to use that tono cover, there's this part of the truck on the uh, back left here. So I'm going to press that. And when I press it, it's going to automatically fold back. Now, if you're not a pickup truck person, the reason that these are useful is it's just more aerodynamic. When you're not carrying things, it's nice to have these closed. Now, if I want to open it back up, I'm just going to press also on this button. These are a very common point of failure on this truck. So if you're borrowing a friend's or use one and this doesn't work, don't be surprised. Some of these trucks are optioned with a manual cover at the moment, but I wanted to show you how the automatic one works because that's what this truck launched with. Then uh, we can close the bed manually. It is a manual process. But before I do that, I also want to show you there are power outlets in this truck. I'll show you how to enable those later in this video. They live here in the bed. I'll also show you there's an optional air compressor. Actually, not optional. It's included. So here, if you open it up, you can see the air compressor. We can actually set our PSI here, and we can say if we want to start or stop it, then plug in the hose basically um, to you know inflate either Schrader or press the tires. This is super useful if you're off-roading, you want to reinflate your tires, or you have a mountain bike or something, you want to inflate those tires. It'll work as long as you have the right attachment. We saw in this, this truck, those are living in the front trunk. I'm going to close that though, because I'm not using it. Super nice to know that's there though. Really nice feature. I'm going to close this up and then show you another really hidden cool element of storage in this truck called the gear tunnel. You can access the gear tunnel from either side because both of these are doors. There's one on the driver's side, there's one on the passenger side. As long as the truck is unlocked and I'm near it, if I press this button here on the front end of the bed, you once I press this button, it's going to release this door. Then I can pop it open the rest of the way myself. And you can see in there, there is a lot of storage that is currently being used by the truck's owner. There's also a hidden 12 volt in there as well. If you want to plug in accessories, we have to close it manually. Make sure you latch it. The process is the same on the passenger side. We go over here and we press the hidden button here. 
hold it until this thing pops open. We open that. And on this side, there's actually a 120 volt power outlet that we can use if we flip up. Uh, we're gonna have to enable that in the truck, but I'll show you how to do that later in this video. Super handy. By the way, these doors also can hold the weight of a person, so you can stand on them. Super cool feature, <laughs> love that. But let's make sure these are closed and tidy. Some more hidden features of the truck lie with a uh, driver's side door, hidden flashlight. Really cool, I can pop this out and just like that, I have a flashlight that actually uses the same battery cells as are in the main battery in the truck to drive it. Really cool, just a flashlight. I can you know, press it to toggle it off and on and it charges when I put it back in the compartment in the truck. So even if I forget to turn it off, just by putting it back in here, it turns off and it's charging. Really cool. If you're trying to get, you know, do stuff at night, super helpful to actually have a flashlight built into the truck. You also have a Bluetooth speaker built in here that lives here in the truck. So at any time, you should be able to just pop it out. And this fun box functions as a Bluetooth speaker. There's a handle over here for it, and it can just live outside the truck. You can use this as a normal Bluetooth speaker. Um, there are buttons to control it on the back right there. There's even an included lantern with it, a light, so you can see for parties at night. Really cool. But I'm gonna put it back in the truck where it lives. It actually charges also in this spot. So lives here in the truck. Make sure you latch it back closed there. Super cool. So we've shown you mirror controls. We've shown you steering wheel controls. We've shown you seat controls. You can of course also use the windows normally. Uh, four windows in this truck and they all work as you would expect. Roll down, roll up, just here. Uh, very standard, no funky, you know, toggling rear and front. That's super useful. Now onto climate control, the next most important thing with this truck. There are shortcuts built in here for temperature. You can see up and down on the temperature. Uh, your seat cooled coolers or heaters, uh, and then your defrosters uh, for front and rear, of course. Then if you press this temperature, you're gonna get a full climate menu. You can turn the full climate system off, turn it back on. You can toggle between controlling the front climate and the back climate. You can toggle sections off depending on what you want off and on. So footwells for the rear passenger is off right now. Uh, I can turn the main vents off or on too. Same process for the front. I can turn off or on any vent, including the floor vents, including dash vents, just by toggling, very intuitive. If I wanna move airflow, there's no manually adjustable vents. I'm actually using the touchscreen to slide them around. I can also multi-touch and pinch to focus air or spread it out. Find this really cool, but it does take some adjustment. Steering wheel heater controls and seat heater or cooler controls are on the side. You can see for the driver, here they are. For the passenger, uh, they of course have no steering wheel, but they have heated and cooled seats. You can control whether you want AC on or off with this icon based off its state. You can control whether you don't want auto climate, or you can manually, of course, control the fan speed. You can sync climate between passenger and driver or force it um, to be separate. You can control recirculation with this button or just let the air vent through the truck. That's the full climate menu. You can exit that by pressing this. Then, of course, you can switch between apps on this vehicle. So climate's the most important. I already showed you how to get into settings. If this looks slightly different, that's because there's more options, again, under these three dots here. Your most recent one shows up. Navigation's really important. Um, it's basically just a map view. We'll show you later in this video how to navigate to a charger and charge the truck. But just to know, in general, you can press search for destinations and it's fairly intuitive. You can just look up where you wanna go. The truck will actually navigate you and it'll navigate chargers on the way. So if I'm here in Fort Collins, but I wanna to go to Las Vegas, right, very far away, the truck is actually going to do some route planning, automatically calculate my chargers on the way, everywhere I should stop, really cool. But again, I will show you the actual charging process for this truck later in the video. Let's let it calculate the route though and see what it does. It's really cool to see it automatically calculate and add these stops. You can see automatically adds all my charging stops. I can start the navigation or even change settings like if I wanna to arrive to charging stops at a certain percentage of battery, super cool. But I'm gonna cancel this navigation. Some good elements of cabin comfort to know are you have this center console space you can access by pressing a button in here. You can see when I press this button, basically manually pops open. Bunch of space here, I can store things. Just close it like that. 
really useful. Also, the cup holders in this vehicle are hidden by default, but they slide out for the driver um, just like that. Two cup holders, so you can use any frozen strawberry, acai, or other drink of your choice in these cup holders. I find they're very nice, flexible, pretty usable. There's also a lot of storage space here in this area, which I appreciate a lot. Also, the driver's side pockets are expandable in case you didn't know. So you can expand them open. Super nice if you have large water bottles or, you know, all kinds of oddly shaped accessories. Some more comfort things to note if we go back in the climate menu and I go into this icon, you can see that's pet mode. Pet mode is a really cool feature. Teslas have this too. Basically, it's going to uh, leave the vehicle running the air conditioning if I leave. So if I step out of the car, my pets will be comfortable because it doesn't have to idle a gas engine. One cool thing electric cars can do. I've turned it back off. You can just toggle it with that button, but I find that so, so helpful. And of course, it'll also juice up the fan speed, keep your pets nice and comfortable so they don't overheat on a hot day. Super nice to do. You can leave your windows closed and your pets will be safe and comfortable. Also, for the back passengers, you can lock the screen if you find that you never have back passengers and you're accidentally activating it, or you don't want your kids or rear passengers to be able to change their climate settings. This screen's fairly self-explanatory, but I can lock and unlock it right here from the driver display, something I thought worth mentioning. R1T is a pretty tall vehicle. One feature Rivian's added in software that I thought would be worth mentioning is called Neo Mode, where it'll use the air suspension to make it easier to exit and enter the vehicle. You can find this in the settings app that I've showed you earlier when you're under vehicle and then access. If you scroll down, there's an option to kneel vehicle upon parking. Now be aware that doing this is gonna basically stress the air suspension and the compressors a little bit more. So if you're someone who's worried about long-term service uh, and conserving that, then I can totally understand leaving that off. I know the owner of this vehicle, Kyle, does that. But if it's something that you find useful uh, and make the vehicle more accessible to you, it's absolutely something you can enable. It's pretty useful in that it'll, again, lower the car, the truck, I should say, so that when you get out and in, you don't have to climb into the seat as much. More important things to know, we already showed you navigation. There's also a music button, fairly self-explanatory. This opens media. I can listen to podcasts and music from Spotify. There's a tune in, there's title, there's Amazon A-L-E-X-A, -E not going to say her name. There's simply your phone. If you want to connect your phone to Bluetooth, then of course you can stream it as a media source. Fairly familiar, I think, to most car owners. Then of course you also have an advanced equalizer if you want to change your advanced sound settings. Super nice. That's all under the music app. Then importantly here is the drive mode app. And this is important and I'll get more into it in the driving part of this video. For now, let's go on to access and security. We've seen the screen before. This is where we can control, right? The charge port, hood, all of these elements. I'm gonna show you the charge port and the charging part of this video. The gear tunnel, we already showed you how to access it from the outside with the key on you, but you can also control the left and right opening of the gear tunnel with this. You can't close it though, that is a manual close. You can, however, close the tonneau cover because it's powered. We've shown you how to adjust your things before. There's also a car wash mode, very importantly. So enable car wash mode if you are planning on going basically through a uh, either automated or conveyor belt style car wash. If you are in a conveyor belt car wash, you'll want to shift to neutral so it can roll your car and not damage any of the motors or components of the vehicle. And turn that off because I'm not washing the car. We've shown you briefly settings. Uh, you can control basically access, who has access to the vehicle, what the settings are for unlocking and locking the vehicle. Um, super easy. Uh, the proximity locking feature where you walk away, it'll lock, walk close to it, it'll unlock. You can do this either for, the, of course, the Rivian key fob or iPhones that have or Android phones that have the Rivian app, super useful. Driver Plus basically is a screen for controlling all of the automated driving features and safety systems. We'll show some of these in the driving part of this video. Units I've shown you, very nice. Configure that based as you want to. Updates for the vehicle, these are automatic over the air. One of the coolest things with the Rivian. Uh, you can um, service any components by turning on service mode. If you're changing your wipers, your tires, etc., it will basically prep the vehicle for those conditions. 
exterior lights, etc. There's some more app settings, drivers and keys, standard settings. If you ever are confused about something with the Rivian that we haven't covered in this video, or you find yourself, uh, you know, just needing to know something, you can press the three dots here, go to the owner's guide. Owner's guide is this little info icon, and it's a really nice interactive, basically, series of um, illustrated and uh, text-based uh, guide to the vehicle. Super nice. You can even search in the owner's guide here, bring up a keyboard if you want. Uh, but I'm not going to do that today, so let me dismiss that uh, and go to show you more apps. So under these three dots, more apps live. Some of them will pop over here into your recents. We've shown you the owner's guide, settings. Phone is fairly self-explanatory. If a phone's connected, this will show you your contacts, recent calls, all of those things. There's a camping mode. Very cool feature of this truck because it has air suspension is the ability not only to have pet mode, but camp mode where you can basically leave climate control on the vehicle, have the vehicle use the air suspension to level itself out on surfaces, activate floodlights, turn displays off to save power. Um, there's a camp courtesy mode that kind of ties into that. Uh, you can basically prioritize your energy use, whether you want the truck to stay on for comfort overnight to have climate uh, or stay off. You can control the outlets here too, very important. I showed you some of the outlets in the bed and the gear tunnel. You can turn on outlets and um, either uh, 30 miles of battery, it'll disable them forcefully, or you can choose a timer to turn off the outlets once you've done that. But I'm gonna leave those outlets off. Super cool to do that. To level the truck, you do this, truck's already level, so that's enabled, very nice. That's camp mode. There's also gear guard. This is like Tesla sentry mode. If you've been in a Tesla, automatically using the vehicle's cameras, it will be able to basically record incidents. Um, super nice if you um, have a storage device plugged in. This is really nice. Then we also have our energy setting. I'll show this screen more so in the charging part of this video. Cameras, I briefly showed this. Cameras are useful because if you're parking, you have your 360 camera here, you can, um, also go to a front camera or a rear camera. Basically just, I press these buttons to toggle what I'm seeing, right rear view, front view. You can kind of go through different views, see the um, cameras around the truck when you're parking or just in general, you can bring this up anytime. Very helpful. I'm gonna go back to navigation though, because that's the screen I like to kind of live on with the vehicle. And then let's talk about the driver display. This can be customized too. So. By default with the driver display, it just shows what's going on. Um, if we haven't started the vehicle yet, uh, we're in the vehicle. The vehicle is ready to drive once your foot's on the brake and the key fob or your phone or whatever is letting you access the vehicle is nearby. For t us today, that's the key fob. So I press my foot on the brake and because I have the key on me, vehicle is just good to go. There's no start button, no uh, nothing to turn on the battery or the engine. It's just good to go. If I wanted to go in the drive, then I would shift the stock down. Of course, foot on the brake, shift down into drive. You can see by default it has the brakes held, so I'm gonna have to hit the accelerator. We'll get into driving in the driving part of this video. But I can go into reverse. I can uh, step down once for neutral. By the way, when I go in reverse, it shows my cameras. Super useful feature. Um, many vehicles have this, but thought I'd note that. Tap down once, I'm in neutral, in case I wanna do that, um, with my foot on the brake, of course. To get into neutral, I have to hold, keep holding the shift into it, and now I'm in neutral mode. Um, but I'm gonna go back into park. You can get into park at any time by pressing this button. Now I am in park. You can customize what you see on this screen, by uh, actually using these buttons. So first off, I should mention, if you wanna control music and media, you can play or pause your media by clicking in on this button, and that's gonna play whatever you have in a music app. So whether your phone's connected, whether you have Spotify uh, or anything, that would play it. So we wanna play our podcast, we can do that. Um, we can pause and play the podcast, change the volume of it. Uh, we can skip tracks by... When we drove them, it's like... So I pause the podcast, I can go left and right to skip tracks, you know, go back and forth. But importantly here, I can hold left and right to switch between different views on the driver display. So you can see now it shows a map. This would show me directions uh, here as well as the navigation if I had navigation plugged in the car. But I'm going to uh, switch it. So I'm going to hold left, you can also hold right, and I'm going to toggle to a tire pressure view. Once you start driving, the vehicle can guess its tire pressure. Then I'm gonna do it again, 
and you can see I can have a view efficiency. Right now, these are the only three views you can get. There may be more added in software updates, but you can toggle between these by holding these buttons on the steering wheel. These buttons also do something, but only when we're using the driver assist system. So I'm gonna get into that later in this video. Let's talk about wipers and lights. Fairly easy in this vehicle. I really like how you adjust them. Uh, one, if you just wanna manually use the wipers once, just press that button in. You can see they'll go in. Of course, you can push it in and hold it to trigger washer jets. If you wanna change your wiper settings, you just go up and down on this and you can see on that screen based off us toggling up and down, we go between different wiper modes, different wiper speeds, uh, sensitivities. I just like to leave it on auto personally, but your preference. There's also the same toggle function for headlights with this one. So with this switch, I can go up and down and I can go between auto, which I like to be, but I can also of course go into having my lights forced on, front fog lights, all fog lights. I can do just parking lights um, or I can have my lights manually turned off. Again, I like to leave it in auto. Just set it to what you want, and then it will basically set that way. Super easy. That's basically most of the details of the interior of the Rivian, and now I think it's time for us to get into driving the vehicle. And driving the vehicle first requires a little knowledge of drive modes. So when I press the suspension icon, right, remember this screen, this shows us our drive modes. And the Rivian has a really flexible drive mode system. Not only are you controlling things like the sensitivity to the acceleration, the throttle, the braking, but also its suspension system, which is a mixture of hydraulic roll control and air suspension dampers. It's really cool. All purpose is a mode that if you don't know what you want, just leave it in that, honestly. Uh, within any of these modes, you can customize ride height between a few settings, high, standard, or low. Right now I'm in standard. If we want to lower the ride of the vehicle for efficiency, uh, we can do that. We can set low. We're going to lower ride height. We have to confirm there's no obstructions. Uh, don't do this uh, you know, if there are because uh, the vehicle needs some space for air compressors to work. So uh, there's no obstructions under the vehicle. We're not going to puncture anything. So let's lower the ride height and um, you'll wait a bit and you'll know it's changing because you'll see this is blinking as it switches into a low ride height. Once as a solid, your ride height has changed. Now the vehicle is lower. If we wanted the vehicle to be high up, we could do high, or we could leave the vehicle in auto and then it's gonna automatically adjust its height based on speed. So if you're like on a highway, it's gonna be low uh, to be very aerodynamic. We can put the vehicle into a sport mode where it'll force the ride height to lower, conserve if you want basically to maximize your range, a snow mode for traction in snow and winter weather, an off-road mode, this is really cool. It's gonna raise the ride height so you have more ground clearance, really cool feature of this vehicle, and optimize the stability control in all systems for basically driving off-road with good traction, of course, provided you have the right tires. There's even a towing mode. So all of these drive modes exist and you can customize the ride height. Then down here, you can customize the ride firmness or softness. I like to leave it in soft for daily driving and roads, really comfortable. You can change your brake regen. Uh, the owner of this vehicle, Kyle, likes to use high brake regen that effectively gives you a one pedal effect where you lift off the um, accelerator and the vehicle slows down. We'll get more into this in the driving part of this video, but if you're less comfortable with that, you can turn brake regen on standard. There's no way to actually turn it off entirely in this vehicle, a lot like a Tesla. You kind of just have to have it on to some degree. Stability control, you can turn off or on. If you don't know much about this, please leave this on for safety. That's basically the basics of drive modes. Really nice how much customizability this vehicle gives you. Now let's actually pilot the vehicle, talk about the driving experience, how we use it, um, how brake regen works, and what the driver assistance systems are like. Okay, getting to drive the Rivian R1T, we'll need, of course, our foot on the brake to basically tell the truck to uh, wake up to us. So, foot on the brake, truck's ready. Don't know why the wipers went off, uh, might have detected something. But anyhow, once we're in the drive mode we want, which I showed you earlier, for us right now, that's all purpose auto ride height. Foot on the brake, we'll just shift into the gear we want, showing that gear stock I showed you earlier. I'm going in the drive. By default, the vehicle is in a brake hold function. I'm actually basically parked, just held like this. But the minute I put my foot on the accelerator, 
the truck will start moving. And of course you have full power steering um, that changes slightly based off your drive mode as well, based off how firm or uh, soft it is. But I'm moving and then if I lift my foot off the accelerator because we have brake regen on a high, the truck will pretty aggressively just slow down and just stop moving. Now. This is basically the opposite of how lots of automatic uh, gas cars work with a function called creep. Uh, this truck will encourage you to use one pedal driving as us electric car drivers call it. Basically letting the car, when you lift your foot off the accelerator, um, use a mode where it reverses the current of the motors, actually charges the battery and slows you down with the energy it's uh, basically charging the battery back up with. So really cool. It's a way to basically get some more efficiency down hills. Really nice feature. And then traffic, the one pedal effect is really nice. So I like having that. Uh, but I'm just going to go and drive here, turn signals, everything in this truck is fairly normal as opposed to some vehicles like let's say a Tesla Model S where the turn signals are on the steering wheel, is it buttons, everything's normal. That's just the stock here, right? My left and right turn signals. I'm driving and then I'm going to show you, um, if I can, the vehicle driver display. You can see what that looks like. So basically that is uh, just showing me my speed on the right, of course, also the gear I'm in, drive gear, as well as a visualization of the truck on the road uh, and then the truck's computer vision system identifying the road around it, as well as other vehicles that will show up here as well. So we're driving and um, we do have a brake pedal I should mention so if you need to come to a stop fast please use that brake pedal but normally just drive you will notice I think um, I'm not a truck person I don't drive a lot of pickup trucks and the Rivian R1T is uncannily like a car in terms of its driving. One, it's quick. Two, it actually handles decently well. It's still a larger vehicle if you're not used to driving trucks and things like that. So keep that in mind when you're parking, using tight spaces. Uh, feel free to use that camera app we showed you earlier on the main display. But the driver display here is very useful. I like being able to switch functions out, see my efficiency, see my maps, etc. Of course, controlling my music as well with this left side of the wheel and that um, those controls. But the right side of the wheel is where I control what Rivian calls Driver Plus. And Driver Plus is a pretty uh, basic driver assistant system. It's nothing like Tesla full self-driving or other systems that you know claim to be able to uh, pilot the car almost by themselves with some human intervention. This isn't anything like that. Rivian's not trying to do that. Instead, they're just trying to basically help you uh, on highways. It's a system actually called Highway Assist for that reason. But um, Driver Plus is the branding for the general safety features like forward collision avoidance and all the things we may or may not have. Uh, okay, so when we're on normal roads, it's uh, one, it's okay to use uh, Driver Plus for VN's right assist system. So I'm gonna press down once on the stock, on this stock, and that's gonna put me in adaptive cruise. Uh, where it's following the car in front of me. I still have to keep my hands on the wheel, of course. It's not doing any form of auto steering. However, it will slow down based off the car in front of me or speed up to match them. Uh, so you can see it's slowing down here. Uh, now we had a fairly aggressive following distance. We can adjust our following distance with this right wheel if I thumb through it. So I can thumb basically right uh, to have a farther following distance or a closer following distance just based off uh, this control, I can change the maximum speed of my adaptive cruise control with the right and left buttons here on the wheel. Uh, and you can see it's nice for stop and go traffic as well uh, because it will just simply uh, start up again so you don't have to constantly you know, be massaging the pedals uh, to stop and go in traffic. You're just cruising along thanks to driver plus. Now if you want to use auto steer, it's not always available. It typically is, I think, only available on pre-mapped highways, but to try to use it, you double tap uh, down on this stock, and if it's available, it will enable. But if it's unavailable, you can see that message that it's gonna say, highway assist unavailable on this road. Sometimes it just doesn't like the road conditions. Other times it deems the road not a highway or not something Rivian's mapped. Therefore, it's not gonna enable. But adaptive cruise by itself is super helpful. And you know, I find a real uh, foot saver in terms of just convenience with the pedals. If you wanna disengage from the uh, driver plus system, whether or not you have auto steer turned on, then anytime you can just flip up on the stock on the right and that'll put you back and you'll know that because the blue speed thing next to your speedometer goes away and now I'm in just back in normal drive mode. I can manually control everything. Both adaptive cruise and driver assist are off at this point. 
when it comes time to charge your Rivian, you can do so, of course, at your house or anywhere there's a charger. But in this example, we wanna show you how to navigate to a fast charger using the car's built-in navigation. So if you're not here already, make sure you press the navigation icon to be on the map screen. Then you can see these three filters as the latest software update that show you your speed, network, and availability. So availability, we want chargers, obviously, that are online. We can leave that checked. Network, if you have any preferences for charging providers, you can list those here. One benefit of using Rivian's own network is you'll just plug in, it'll recognize the vehicle and bill you automatically. But all of them are compatible. Tesla is soon to come with the use of an adapter. We can also filter speed. Right now, I want to charge quickly. So I've filtered DC fast charging over 100 kilowatts. There's also an under 100 kilowatt setting or 25 kilowatt slower AC charging, the kind of chargers you might see at um, you know, garages, businesses, even your home. So we're gonna zoom out and by zooming out, we'll see all of the options we have for chargers. So I want to navigate to this charger over here, which looks fast. It's an Electrify America in Loveland. So not the charge point, sorry, Electrify America. Okay, so I'm gonna navigate to the Electrify America in Loveland you can zoom out right see where the charges are available this looks like the one i want to go to so i'm going to select that option just touch it and then you can see the availability right now it's unknown but i know it's online per the electrify america app always check the status of online fast chargers because while well, this system has real-time info sometimes it's not always the most reliable so we can hit start and that will begin our navigation as well as precondition the battery for the ideal temperature so that they can get the quickest charge. It'll even tell you the estimated range your truck has when you reach the charger, as well as of course, the mile distance and the estimated time of arrival. If you wanna preview the route, you can press this button and see what that looks like. Otherwise, our navigation is good to go. When you minute to your charger, make sure you pull in because the charge port for the Rivian is on the front left side of the vehicle or driver uh, front end of the vehicle to make sure you get a nice kind of fit into the charger You can always use the parking cameras to make sure that you are uh, doing a good job You can switch to the 360 view Which I like to make sure you're lined up well and that you're not going to hit any curbs or bollards or anything So it looks like we should be close enough So I'm going to press the vehicle into park and uh, now we have the option of going into the vehicle screen here and we could press open charge port, but I'm gonna show you there's also a button on the charge port you can open to access. So let me show you that now. On the charge port, you can press what is essentially a hidden button here where there's these three lines. Pressing that, as long as the key is nearby, will basically trigger the motorized charge port. We could also, as I showed you, do that on the vehicle screen. And then we can just plug in, uh, activate however our charging network works, and uh, we should be good to charge. When you're plugging in fast chargers using this port, you're going to need to open this flap open to be able to access full power uh, and actually fit this guy in. So we're going to do that. Direct current is going to be sent to the vehicle as soon as the charger activates. We'll do that per however we do that on this channel. We've shown you how to activate the Electrify America charge point and EVgo. If it's a Rivian unit, it'll link to your Rivian account and it'll automatically recognize you. Once plugged in, you can see on the driver display of the vehicle when it's starting the charge and when it's charging, as well as an average estimate of how long it's gonna take you to reach your charge limit. To view way more details, you're gonna go on the main screen here, press the three dots if it's not in your quick menu, and make sure you select the energy application. Let me try that again energy that's going to open it up you can see we have basically our range estimate based on uh, our current drive settings you can see the miles an hour charging speed estimate as well as more hopefully in the future Rivian will expose kilowatts for those of us who like to use the more standard unit of measurement for charge speed you can also change your charging schedule if you were charging at home in this case since we're DC fast charging everything is good to go uh, and of course charge limits can be adjusted here I recommend about 70 to 80 percent for daily use 100 percent as a charge limit maybe makes sense if you are starting your day out and you want to go as long as possible without charging for instance on a road trip generally for battery health I like to leave mine at 70 to 80 percent you can see these presets Rivian has helpfully put in here when it's time to stop your charge you can of course stop your charge from the charger 
uh, but you can also unlock it from the vehicle. So to unlock the charge port, you'll hit this stop charging button and then it'll end your session. You can also see on the energy screen an ability to basically see your session summary while you're charging. So this is gonna show you how much energy you put back into the battery pack. Currently that's been 54 kilowatt hours for us in 18 minutes. You can see how much of that went into the battery pack, how much of that went into just, you know, cooling the cabin and optimizing the battery, as well as accessories, anything plugged into the vehicle. That's awesome. I'm done with that though. We're gonna stop charging. We'll press that. Uh, and then we should hear a click on the outside of the truck once the charge port is able to be unlocked. So we're gonna go over here. Charger says we can unplug. We can press in on the handle, unplug it, and return it to where it belongs. Then we can make sure we close this flap and the charge port door should warn us on the truck if we forget to close it, but I always like to close it myself by just pressing this button, closes back into place, and then we're off to our next destination. All right, pardon as the truck locks behind me as I walk away the proximity zone, but that's the basics of how to start, drive, and charge the Rivian R1T. Truly, I think one of the most exciting vehicles on the market currently. Uh, a lot of the things and tips in this video will also be shared with R1S, the Rivian SUV that's based off this truck, uh, but we will be making a dedicated video just for that vehicle, so if that video is up yet, as of you watching this, we'll have that in the info card up there with specific tips for the SUV because uh, um, you know, the SUV and the truck, they have slightly different features as you would imagine. The SUV, for instance, doesn't have the cool gear tunnel we showed you the truck has. But I think really awesome, super versatile vehicle. And I hope this video helped you as a new owner or a renter or someone borrowing a friend's truck to get to know this vehicle a bit better. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comments, either myself or other helpful people in that aspect community. We'll be happy to help you. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to this channel to learn more about electric vehicles in general and how to own and uh, operate them. But thanks so much for watching. I've been Max and I'll see you in the next one.